the Spirit and the Bride says, "Come, come, Lord Jesus." This is the shout, the shout of our soul. It is the desire of our being to be with the Lord in the glory. And we know through the signs that we are close to this day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet the beloved church and those the ones who honor us with their vi with visiting us and those who follow us online with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to meditate on the gospel according to Luke wrote. Luke 15. Blessed be the name of the Lord who brought us here to receive in Him the food for our souls. Throughout the praise, we have already been able to feel the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit, the joy and fellowship with the brethren. That has no price. It's priceless. Glory to Jesus. Luke. Chapter 15, verse 4 onwards. We can uh, read, uh, read verse 4 in the church, the fifth, and on and on to the tenth. One man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after them, the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it in it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep with what was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over me, over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine ju just persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbor, neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the, the peace which I have lost. Lord, just through reading your word, we have already received a great blessing. Because in it, we find joy, life and salvation. Open up our minds so that we may be able to understand the message from eternity that you have prepared for us tonight. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The, there are two parables that the Lord Jesus used to explain two very important things for us in our evangelical walk. The path is only one. There's no way for us to try to deceive ourselves. The only path that leads man to eternity is a path called the narrow path. It's difficult. Yes, it is. Why? Because we are difficult. And we, many times, want to please ourselves. So when the Bible says that the path to salvation is a narrow path, the, the Bible is referring to this, this expression, narrow, is when we place ourselves in us, in our human nature and sinful nature, tendentious to sin, we don't want to um, fit to it. So when the Bible says that the, the path that leads to perdition is a wide path is a uh, highway is like I-95 you can choose to one uh, lane or to another on the far right and but is a path that will lead to perdition everything is allowed the enemy of our souls wants to deceive us and tell us it's nothing wrong nothing's nothing wrong with that isn't are there those the expression that we hear all the time from our co-workers to to our from our so-called friends and neighbors, and even from family members, they say, oh, how much foolishness. God is love. God is love. 
but his love teaches to walk on a path that is a path of life, the path of security, the path of, that will lead to salvation. And that's why Jesus used the parables so often. The parables were ways for you to explain something and using resources of the time, of the culture of the time. Jesus used language that was that spoke to them uh, associated with their daily lives for them to understand the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God so that we could live today enjoying of the benefits of salvation and the, the kingdom of heaven already preparing us to enter into a place where uh, according to our nature we are not worthy but we are going to enter because the blood of the Lamb has justified us the, bleed, the blood that we, to which we plead and the blood to which we pleaded at the beginning of the service and maybe you who entered here tonight visiting us you thought that you noticed something different we knelt down and the servant that began the service before greeting everyone he used the following expression Lord we plead for the power that is in the blood of Jesus and why do we do this clarifying to you who visit us because without shedding of blood there is no remission of sin when Jesus dies on the cross he was representing all the lambs every animal that was uh, sacrificed in the Old Testament because every year every special moment in Israel every moment of adoration every moment of request of forgiveness an animal was sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins of their owner now Jesus comes and dies representing all those animals that have passed and and wouldn't possibly be necessary in the future do you know that when Jesus was hanging on the cross there were a blood coming down from the thorns that pierced his forehead there was blood that was come down from the whips on his back and uh, also there were blood coming down from the nails on his hands and feet and and you know that that blood was being shed for us now 2,000 years afterwards so that you and I could have access to the God the Father because in the moment in which he said Father I give you my my soul to your hands Jesus was not forced to do anything when the soldiers came to imprison him he didn't resist the Bible said that he went like a silent lamp to the press of to the uh, of the ones who were going to sacrifice him and at that moment one of those drops of blood was representing my name your name I'm gonna die here to save someone that is going to be born in the year town in such year and such century bless the name of the Lord and you who didn't know this salvation is something so simple and that the world and the religions and dogmas and taboos they try to complicate but we are here to clarify and simplify making it very clear that so that if you sound, say in your heart that man so called that was called Jesus that many want to ignore his existence his divinity his uh, fatherhood there are many in history that ignore him there there is an expression in the Bible that in the history that says before Christ and after Christ he came to this earth to make uh, redeemed to redeem you and I and you who are here in your heart you are saying this in your heart I believe I believe that Jesus is the Son of God the one who was sent by God the Father and died so that I could have life he died so that my sins could have been forgiven and if you had if you just said this in your heart from this moment forward your heart your name is written in the book of life that's that's very simple as simple as drinking a, a glass of water and in that that's the way uh, heavens works and you who are here tonight and we who entered here tonight we are before this God that has all this care that allowed his only son to be given and to be killed with uh, death of Christ cross to give us salvation so now comes this parable said that this man had, had 100 sheep and 
when he loses one, he, he works tirelessly until he finds it. Humanly speaking, we could have thought, oh, he had 100 sheep. 99 was not enough for him? No. No. God wants you and I in your heart. God looks to you and I and he says, I will not give up on you. I'm going to go after you until I find you. And when I find you, I will place you on my shoulders. And that's what the Bible said. A couple of versions says that he plays on the sheep on his shoulders, very pleased with joy, with happiness, because he loves each one of us. And he will never let go of each one of us. There's a war, eternal war. The enemy of our souls is going to try to betray us. He's going to tell one sheep, sheep, stop being a fool. You're always inside of the, of the corral or eating uh, from the grass only where uh, the shepherd brings you or drinking water from where the shepherd brings you. I'm going to show you a place where you can drink much more water and wider fields and this invitation to your eyes, innocent, may be a pleasing invitation. And But if you go, you know what is going to hap happen? It's going to be an abyss. It's going to be a hole. There is going to be a place where if you lay down, you are not going to be able to get up again. There, are, Do you know that? There are places in where in, in the topography of the geography, if the sheep lays down on that place, the sheep is not going to be able to get up again because there are places the, sh the shepherd is always paying attention to the sheep because of the shape uh, of the sh the body of the sheep and the the shape shape of the topology may prevent the sheep from getting up and that's how fragile we are the division of the sheep is very narrow it's only six um, 18 feet of distance so to the sheep uh, uh, farther than 18 feet the sheep may look uh, at something they think it's another sheep but maybe a wolf or a predator and that's why the word is very clear he went he left the 99 and went to the one that had been lost until you have found it and maybe you have been found by the lord today you are the one who is going to answer this the holy spirit may touch your heart and say you i am this sheep i need to be found I was found when I entered to this church, I felt the presence of the Lord. And I can guarantee you this, Jesus placed you on his shoulders today. And in the moment as we were singing the songs, your soul was, was cradled. You received, your heart received a bomb. And this serenity, this love that you felt here is a representation of heaven and eternity don't allow this opportunity to pass you by today is a tonight's a night of salvation i'm using a biblical text i'm not saying this out of my own heart this is not something that was created by the maranatha institution i'm using a biblical text tonight's a night of salvation if you hear this voice do not harden your heart tonight is a night of salvation and many are thinking no I've already watched many debates, many videos on YouTube, and I've already seen that Jesus is going to return in, in a specific year. Be careful with this. Very, very, be very careful because the Bible said that not even Son Jesus knows, not even the angels, only the Father knows. So there is no study on this earth that may be able to tell you a specific date so that you can sin, 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 and then get ready just before he returns. That's abominable in, the eye, in God's eyes. God wants to bring you to his, to his fold so that he can take care of you and feed you, give, bring you crystal waters to quench your thirst and bring you to green pastures. And the care, like the King David said, your rod and, and, and your staff bring comfort to me. You might think, Lord is not giving me 
uh, freedom, but this is not the kind of freedom that uh, you will need to receive. There is a special freedom that God gives you. God has given you limits from this period so that we may be preserved. When we are obedient, we are preserved. I believe that tonight you went in here and this word was prepared by the Lord. We are only relaying this message and you have been found tonight. Climb up to the shoulders of Jesus and the parable continues. Jesus also said that there was a woman having ten <coughs> silver coins. Coins are great worth. If, if she lost one, she she would be restless until she found the lost uh, silver coin. And here we notice a, a detail that has a prophetic meaning here. The Bible says that this woman, she opens up a lamp, she turns, lights up a lamp and uh, wipes the house and seeks inside of her house with diligence. And this is something we need to do spiritually. The lamp speaks of our heart. And in the Old Testament, the lamps were used constantly. They were carried uh, at the height of the chest, and so it would light up the, the face and would light up the path so that it would identify you to from all, by other people and also light up the path. You understand? This is our heart. And what does the word speaks about, speak about our hearts? It is a curious expression. The Bible says that our heart is deceitful. And how many times you and I were going to make a decision when we filled with excitement and we said, oh, no, that's it. In English, I'm having butterflies on, on my belly. And I know that this is going to be the right decision. And then later on, you realize that was the worst decision in, 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 our, in your life. And you don't need to raise your hand. I already raised a hand for, for every one of you. Many times we make decisions based on our own emotions, based on our adrenaline, or based on that moment, the heat of the moment. I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to sign this contract. I'm going to buy. I'm going to sell. And later on, what a great harm. How much sadness. And so the Bible says the truth. Our heart is deceitful. And as I said, the lamp is our heart. And if this lamp is filled with oil, the olive oil, and this lamp is lit up, so then our heart's not deceitful. When, it, when our heart is, when the lamp is empty and turned off, it's deceitful. But when it's filled and lit up, is the Lord speaking on our lives. God is speak, uh, clarifying our uh, familial aspect and our emotional aspect and our professional aspects. God has direction for everything in our lives. But we need to be filled with Him. The oil inside of the lamp is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when the lamp is lit up, is the Holy Spirit not the experience from yesterday, from the day before or last year, but is a new experience every morning in the presence of the Lord. The Bible is a very specific expression. You know what wakes up the Christian? The alarm clock of the Christian is mercy. mercy. The mercy of the Lord wakes us up every morning. Every day when we wake, uh, open up our, arm, our, our eyes in the morning, we receive a gift from God. And you and I, we, we set our alarm clock to wake us up in the morning, but who knows who is going to wake up in the morning? We may die during the night. But by faith, we set our alarm clocks. But when we are woke in the morning, we are reminded by God that we are loved by Him and that we have worth to Him. And that woman in the parable, she lights up her lamp and then she does something else. She wipes the house. She sweeps the house. And sweeping the house is an act of humbleness. How many of you may have used the expression, when I started in that company, I started sweeping the floor. And then if you are faithful to the Lord, He is going to honor you and cause you to grow in the company. But sweeping the floor is an expression that describes a person that is humble. You need to humble yourself. And she 
or when you sweep the floor in your house, how many times we find things that we would not want to find, some dead insect or something that, some sort of dirt that may cause some sort of uh, uh, health discomfort. And when, when you light up the lamp and then the Holy Spirit comes upon us and is that a moment, a dynamic moment, and a moment in which we need to give maintenance to our spiritual walk, sweeping the floor. She sweeps the floor, but she seeks with diligence. Uh, it is worthless if you just sweep the floor in with neglig negligence. You sweep uh, in a careless way, or throw the, the dirt under a furniture. No, that's not how it was. She swept the floor with and s searched the house with diligence. Diligence means with care, with love, because she was looking for something that she had loved for. In the same way, in the parable of the sheep, the the shepherd had uh, 100 sheep. When he lost one, he, wouldn't he be happy with just 99? She lost one. Uh, the same way with the woman, she had 10 silver coins, she lost one, couldn't she just be happy with the nine? The answer is not. God, in the same way, God, God's not going to give up on you. You are so, are not, invited not to give up and to give worth to the blessing of God in your life. And the woman with the silver coin speaks of a man, a Christian who has experiences and throughout his spiritual life, he got used to the Bible, got used to the songs, got used to the church, got used to saying, uh, with the means of grace, he no longer gives worth to the to anything. If he does not fast, he is okay. If he just misses a service, he's okay. His soul is not bothered anymore, and he becomes comfortable with his himself. And spiritual spiritual coldness is coming, and the coming of, of Jesus, the return of Jesus is coming. And don't we sing, Jesus is coming soon? My brethren, this only sheep to complete this 100, and this silver coin to complete the 10, speak of a work, is a way of life. And you and I have been called, we have been introduced, even though we didn't deserve. Let me open a parenthesis here. Do you remember when you become, became a Christian? When your face would blush, because when we entered the church, we thought, oh, Everyone here is holy, I'm impure, I, I don't even have the right to be here. What kind of God is this that washed my, my garments and gave me white robes of salvation? We would blush with shame, but time passes by and there is a danger that we may lose this silver coin. There is a danger that we may no longer be uh, discomfort with, uncomfortable with sin. And that's what the Holy Spirit is calling uh, attention to us tonight. And that's why the Holy Spirit prepared the service tonight, so that we need to uh, need to bring it back to our attention. We need to go back to the first love. We give this name to this feeling. How many of you who entered here in the service, when you became convert, we cried incessantly, uh, and some even had fit of us laughter and this feeling is needs to be returning to us constantly we need to be bothered uh, the time of the service is coming close I know they have other shores but I need to be there the Holy Spirit is calling me I want to be there and we do everything to be in the presence of our God to be in before the King of glory to be before the one who taught us how to give worth to the spiritual gifts, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is interesting that I was analyzing the list of the spiritual gifts, and the list of the fruit of, of the Spirit is like a fruit cut into slices. There are nine, and the drachmas, there are ten. It is like if was the need that we have to give worth to everything. One thing doesn't work without the other. We cannot just keep one thing and leave another one out. Do you remember when the people left the Egypt and you, each family should take a sheep and they will have to eat? If the family is too small, 
bring the neighbor, but eat the lamp completely. Head, uh, entrails, feet, everything. Nothing can be left. It is a work, uh, a project of life. We have been called, we have been enlisted to a different way of life that changed our daily lives, changed our habits, changed our language, changed the way we speak, the way we deal with people. My beloved, this is beautiful. Salvation is beautiful. The assurance of eternal life is beautiful. Give worth to the fellowship with the bread and fellowship with the Holy Spirit is something that can never, uh, we can never forget its worth. Maybe you got lost as a ship and you, you may have lost a silver coin and the, the coin fell from your hands and rolled underneath the furniture. But now we are going to pray to the Lord. We're going to sing a song and you're going to pray in your heart. Lord, I want to be on your shoulders. I want to give proper worth to your salvation completely, Lord. I don't want to miss any detail. I want to give worth to the church. I want to give worth to the presbytery. I want to uh, give worth to the spiritual gifts, the means of grace. I want to be with the bread every day. I want to be burning in me. And I feel like uh, once I felt when I first met you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God that saved us. Write our name in the book of life. And soon he will return to take us back to him. Glory to God.
Glória a Deus. Aleluia. The parable of the one other sheep and the silver coin lost speak of the worth that God gives to you and I. Pay great attention to this. Even though we don't have any worth, we in us, we have no worth, but there is something in us you may have not noticed yet. <coughs> the breath of life, the soul, it does not belong to us. It is God's. That's why when somebody departs from this world, Matter is consumed, but the soul goes back to God. And if you are saved, you will live eternally with God in joy. But you have chosen the wide path. is going to be an eternity of crying and grinding of teeth. So this first word speaks of the word that God gives to you and I. And that's why He sent His Son to die and the cross for us. So now the parable of the silver coin speaks of the worth that you and I give to this work of the Holy Spirit, the salvation. The ten silver coins speak of something that is whole, complete. Speaks of uh, assurance of salvation, forgiveness of the committed sins, the transformation of life. It is the work of the Holy Spirit as a way of life. It is. Uh, it speaks of uh, the holy doctrine. The doctrine that we live is holy, is pure. This doesn't exist anywhere else. The understand that today we have of uh, the word and its completeness, my brother and sister. Give great worth to this. The spiritual gifts, the fruits of the spirit. This is all wonderful. It needs to be given proper worth. Doesn't matter in what moment we got lost or in what moment you lost your silver coin. Today has been found because today is the day of salvation. We're going to sing the, the chorus of this song. We turn to you, Lord. If you, if you were in this situation, you no longer are because today in the arms of the Father, like the song that we're going to sing, The Lord said that with us, we're going to do prowess. We are more than victorious when we are good God. We're going to have a word of glorification for God's holy presence in our midst. Lord, we want to rejoice, we are, raise your name high up, Lord, because you are blessed, Lord. Lord Father, one day you gave your only Son so that we could have access to you, Father, because you sent your son to go to the cross to give free access to you, Lord. Love of Father, today we want to be with you, eternal Lord. Your church is anxious to be with you, Lord. We want to be in streets of gold, singing songs with your angels, Lord. Beloved, beloved Father, in crystal waters, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord, because you are nothing, Lord, without you, Lord. We are small, Lord. We don't deserve, Lord. There's nothing that we might do, Lord. Nothing, Lord. Because your love bring us, yeah, touch our hearts, Lord. Your love is eternal, Lord. Lord, you bring down your ear to pay attention to our petition, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this great love because we feel that we are embraced by you, Lord. And we want to be with you eternally, Lord. We give you thanks for the, your word, for your mysteries. Because it, your message came towards our hearts, spoke to our hearts. And we are here happy to be with you, Lord. We want on our daily lives to wake up with you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. That's the name of the Lord. Lord, we praise you. Because if we love you, because, it's because you loved us first. And that's why 
you went, who came to us and placed us on your shoulders with great love. And what kind of love is this? Unexplainable, incomparable, Lord. We praise the Lord. Because the word says that even if we spoke the tongue of the angel, if we don't have love, we'll be like a bell that, that rings. But you loved us first, Lord. But now the, the silver coin has been found. We understand the love to give worth to our salvation, the sacrifice of your son. And now we are getting ready to meet with you in clouds, Lord. Take us on in peace, Lord. Receive our service, our adoration. We are happy to be with you here in your temple. We are happy to say glory and hallelujah to your name. We are yours and you are our God. Receive our service in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may sit down. The group is going to be singing softly. And at any moment during this service, where you felt the touch of the Holy Spirit in your life, remain where you are. God spoke to you. Yes, He did. He spoke to you, and He's going to continue to speak. I want to hear this from you. Give a sign. Ask the person who is beside you to give a sign. And the ushers, and deacons, and, and pastor, we are here ready to go to you, greeting you with the peace of the Lord. And I hear from you that you have been touched by the Holy Spirit. That's what sustains us, so that you may know that we want to pray with you. I want to ask the Lord that sealed his blessing to you with the burn, with the fire of the Holy Spirit and like to uh, to give assistance to each one who visited us tonight. <laughs>